When you hear the name Edgar Allan Poe, perhaps you think about creepy, morbid stories or a man obsessed with Raven. But aspects of the writer's life were almost more bizarre and spine-tingling than his stories. This is the life and mysterious death of Edgar Allan Poe. So Poe was born in Boston in January of 1809. He is a Capricorn, if you're wondering. And things started out a little bit dark right away. In fact, within just three years, both of his parents passed away. Now, he was adopted out. I don't know. It didn't say in what I was reading if it was like a legal adoption or if he was just sort of sent to live with these people. But either way, he got a new family. And they were very, very wealthy people. Uh, they had a tobacco plantation. So he was living in a mansion. And... Things weren't fantastic. He really wanted to be like his idol, the poet Lord Byron, but his new family really wanted him to be a businessman. And in fact, there are pages of uh, notes that he was supposed to be writing, uh, like in learning things and about tobacco. And on the back, he was he was writing little poems already. So he was very young at this point, but he was already very passionate about literature. So he was living in Richmond, Virginia until 1826 when he then went off to the University of Virginia. He was a stellar student but as many people watching can probably relate was quickly racking up student debt. Now even though like I said he was living with these very wealthy people and they were in this mansion and yada yada they refused to help him financially. In fact, his adopted father um, sent him far less than he knew he needed. So it, there was definitely some bad blood, some, some bitterness going on there. By the end of his first semester, Poe was actually so poor that he had to set his own furniture on fire just to keep warm. So pretty, pretty intense stuff. Not surprisingly, he just could not make ends meet, so he did wind up dropping out. Now, during this time, the one bright spot he had was that he was engaged to a woman, and her name was Elmira Royster. Now, when he dropped out of school, you know, he's humiliated that he had to leave, he's poor, you know, he's upset with his family. So, of course, he goes back to Richmond to see his beloved, and she had, in this time, gotten engaged to another man. So she was engaged to Poe as far as he knew, but then she got engaged to this other man. So now Poe is humiliated because of school, he's poor, and he's heartbroken. So he does go back to his adopted family, but he was too furious to stay there any amount of time because he and his... Uh, adopted dad were just at such odds that it wasn't it wasn't gonna work so because he was refusing to help him financially he pieced out and he decided you know what I want to be a published writer so that's what I'm gonna do and he did he wanted to be successful and he wanted to have uh, an adventure so he accomplished both of those things he, so he published his first book at age 18 and it was called Tamer Lane and then as far as the adventure goes, he wound up joining the army and he did go to West Point. So at age 20, he joined West Point. That's when he was there. And um, it didn't last very long. In fact, he was only there two years before he was kicked out. And I didn't get too caught up in the reasons for him being kicked out because I didn't want this video to be any longer than it's gonna be. But it didn't last. So I'm pretty sure at this point, Poe must have just had some kind of dark cloud over him because he decided, okay, what can I do now? Let me start over. And he goes to his late birth father's home of Baltimore. And he gets in touch with some relatives that he hadn't seen, obviously, in basically his whole life. And in the night, one of his cousins robs him 
And it's not like he had a whole lot anyway. So he was robbed of whatever he did have. And the, the first bright spot really that he's had in years comes now because his aunt, uh, Maria, she becomes like a new mom to him. And Lord knows at this point he needed a mom that was like going to be nice. So he has, he has this newfound relationship. And that, of course, is a very big deal for him. In a bizarre, but I guess not unusual turn of events for that time, he was spending a lot of time with his cousin because she was actually acting as like carrier pigeon for his love letters to other women. But it didn't take long before he wound up falling in love with her. And they are first cousins in case you're wondering. Meanwhile, his adoptive father died. And at this point, most people would be like, oh, finally a break, right? Because they didn't get along. That was unfortunate. But now maybe he's got some money coming to him and he can kind of start over. But no. In fact, not only was Poe left completely out of the will, but the adopted father decided instead to leave money to an illegitimate child that he had never even met. So talk about insult to injury. Very, very, very bitter. So Poe at this point, nothing. He's completely impoverished, but he is starting to publish some of his short stories. So because he's doing that, he's making some networking connections with some different publications in the area. He was able to secure an editorial position at the Southern Literary Messenger. Poe was very popular with this publication and with all of its readers because he was um, a literary critic and he was salty. So he would not only criticize, and I don't mean like critique, I mean criticize the works of these writers, but he would criticize the writers themselves. So when I was reading this, what it, what it brought to mind was basically, I think that Poe would have excelled at being like a gossip channel <laughs> like on YouTube. Like he wanted to be kind of shocking. So he did that and he brought a lot of success to this publication. Now in his early twenties, you know, things are kind of slowly starting to look up for him. He does marry his cousin, Virginia. And it's so confusing that her name is Virginia since we're back and forth in Virginia in this story. But anyway, marries her. She's 13. He's in his early 20s. They're first cousins. It's casual. They move to NYC and then from there they go to Philly because he is still trying to you know, achieve some actual real success as a writer. So he is advancing, he's continuing to work for multiple magazines, different publications, but the couple was really struggling financially. And it's not surprising why, because as you're hearing like, well, he's making, you know, he's, he's publishing more things, he's getting more writings out there, he's working for all these magazines. His first publication included Tales of the Grotesque and Arabesque, and he was paid with the book. They gave him 25 copies of this book as payment. So think about that. I mean, that would be like if you were a barista, if you worked at Starbucks and instead of giving you a wage, they were like, well, here's 25 cups of coffee. What? So even though he's doing these things, it's not super beneficial for him. Because of this, Poe wound up actually going on to champion the fight for fair wages and as well as for international copyright law. So, I mean, if nothing else, at least it did inspire him to, you know, fight a good fight. But yeah, definitely struggling. And this is a new marriage and they're moving a lot. Tricky. It wasn't until January of 1845 that he finally published The Raven that he would become a household name. So finally, he was famous enough to draw bigger crowds when he was doing these like speeches and presentations and readings. And he was able to finally say, I'm going to need a little bit more money from all y'all. And 
he published two more books that year and he wound up um, running his own magazine. So finally, okay, maybe the dark cloud is lifting, things are getting better, he's married, he's getting some success, much better. But <laughs> the dark cloud actually was not lifting, it was just sort of temporarily taking a hiatus because it was back and now thundering over his head. The magazine failed and Virginia got very, very ill. And there were rumors that Poe at this point was sleeping with some married woman. So with all this going on, he's actually run out of town. And at this point, it's 1846. They're run out of the city, so they move to this tiny cottage more in the countryside. And that next winter, Virginia's illness would kill her. She it was TB, consumption, tuberculosis. That was what got her. So now she has passed and Poe is devastated because as unconventional to us now as this marriage was, he was madly in love with her by all accounts. So he was in a very, very bad way emotionally. Now, he was too depressed to even write, which at that point was the only thing that was kind of helping him have a, have a life. And his critics actually said that they, they felt he would soon be dead as well. And they were right. So everyone is tempted to rebound after a serious relationship ends, and Poe was no exception. So he actually went back to Virginia and found his first fiance. Remember her, the one that well, got engaged to someone else at the same time that she was engaged to Poe? Well, he went back, found her. At this point, she's a widow. They have so much in common. So they decide to give it the good college try and they're gonna start again. They, I guess, find some success with this because then they become engaged and the plan is that Poe is going to marry her just as soon as he gets back from a trip to Philly and New York because he's got some writing stuff to take care of. But alas, that would never happen. On his way to Philly, he stopped in Baltimore and vanished for five days. And still to this day, what happened during those five days, we don't know. And we'll touch on that in a bit. But he did turn up in a bar, so in a pub basically, that was being used as a polling place for an upcoming election. I believe the election was for a sheriff. He was found by someone who recognized him and he was brought to Washington College Hospital. If you watched my last video on the Roanoke colonists, then you'll remember that at this point, Poe was mumbling something about Croatoan, and he was dressed in shabby secondhand clothes, which was interesting. They weren't his clothes. It wasn't just that like he was dirty or that he was already in secondhand clothes. They did not belong to him. And he was surrounded by strangers, and he did die in 1849. It was October 7th his mom, so his, his aunt, and his fiance only learned about the 40-year-old's death when they read it in a newspaper. So just tenfold tragedy because it's one thing to lose someone, it's another to find out by a third party like that. And just days after he died, his literary rival Rufus Griswold wrote an obit that was not supposed to be like satirical, but it was supposed to be just a seething commentary on basically what a dumpster fire he thought Poe was because it accused him of being an alcoholic, a womanizer, just like an all around garbage human being. And he even went as far as to say that he has no morals and he had no friends. His hope in doing this was that it was going to kind of posthumously posthumously, posthumously, what? Ruin his career, but instead, for the first time ever, everyone was like, who is this guy? He sounds tragic. I want to know all about him. And so he was selling more than ever. In fact, that's a big part of why we still know him so well today, because it was that drive and success and fame that really kept him uh, is such a staple 
in the literary world. So that really backfired. Um, so when he was dying, just to go back for a second, along with mumbling something about Croatoan, he was also um, hallucinating. He was having really bad fits. And um, so that that's going to be what we go into now because that was his life summed up. But how did he die? Let's talk theories. The night before his death, in between these fits of hallucinations and delirium, he kept calling out for Reynolds. And perhaps this was someone who had attacked him. Mm, there's been a story of a woman, and this, this story seemed very vague from what I could find of it, but there's a story of some woman who claimed that she was attacked by Poe, and so she's calling out for help, and this ruffian comes and, you know, to avenge her beating, beats Poe within like an inch of his life, and then leaves him beaten and bleeding. So the idea is that maybe after this happened, Poe was able to head back to Baltimore, but then upon getting to Baltimore, either by plan or by coincidence, met up with some of his friends from West Point, and then they all went drinking together, but because he was like in such bad shape, he got very drunk very quickly, and then stumbled into the streets totally wasted, and then he was robbed, and then beaten by some other ruffian? So many ruffians. So that's a theory. This practice, this cooping practice, was wildly popular in this time, and in the 19th century it was kind of all the rage, and basically People really cared about elections. We could use some more of that. And they would kidnap someone. We don't need more of this, but they would kidnap someone, disguise them, um, bring them to a polling place, force them to vote for who they wanted them to vote for. And then, because, and this is a thing I would love for us to bring back, as reward for voting in the 19th century, this was before prohibition, you were given alcohol. <laughs> so like, thanks for doing your civic duty, here's alcohol. And so the idea is that, okay, if he was victim to this cooping thing, and you know, he was kidnapped by these gangsters, then he would have been dressed up in this secondhand clothing, um, forced to vote, given alcohol, and then they repeat the cycle over and over again because it's different disguises every time and that way they sort of like stuff the ballot box. So if he was beaten at any point by these people or someone else and then kept being plied with alcohol because he kept having to vote for someone, that could explain some of that. It's been documented that Poe, after just one glass of wine, was pretty much a quote, staggering drunk. And his sister supposedly had the same problem. Now this sister, you know, lived with someone else, so I don't know if that was found after the fact, but his sister supposedly had the same problem. So the idea being that it is a hereditary issue in which you just have a very low tolerance for booze. Before his death, he had admitted to struggling with alcohol and another biographer has actually mentioned that um, a few months before his death, he had gotten very, very ill, and it had some correlation to alcohol. And his recovery was pretty much a miracle. And they, they told him, if this happens again, you will not survive it. Um, but again, everything I found on that seemed a little bit vague. I'm not sure. And if, if any of you are doctors, let me know what that sounds like. But unless he had like an actual liver problem, I'm not sure what would be like, you You got sick from too much drinking and now you're gonna die if you, I don't know. I don't know, it, I'm not a doctor. Coal gas was used for indoor lighting during the 19th century and it actually could have caused carbon monoxide poisoning in Poe. His hair was tested in 1999 because you would still be able to find those traces. And it was inconclusive to the presence of coal gas. 
It did, however, test positive for elevated levels of mercury. This could have been because at this point he was exposed to like the cholera epidemic. But the problem is that even with the levels, what they were, it still would have been 30% or 30 times lower than the level needed for it to be lethal. So technically, like, yes, there was something there that could go together, but it wasn't enough that probably that's going to be something that led to his death. We all know what rabies is. I'm not going to go into detail about it. It could make sense based on like his delirium and all of that, but there's no way to prove it. So this one to me is just sort of a dud. I feel like someone was just like rabies and someone said, that ah, we'll throw it in there. So that's that one. A mass was found in Poe's skull. Um, when he died, he was buried in Baltimore in kind of a really sad way. They, he was literally in an unmarked grave and he was just kind of there. And 26 years later, his coffin was dug up and his remains were exhumed. And thankfully, the reason this happened was because they were going to move him to a better resting place that was more well suited to someone like Poe. And they, they, where he was originally buried in that unmarked spot, they did erect a statue there. So lots of good things going on. But anyway, because they had his remains now, someone had the good sense to say, let's take a look. So obviously at this point, because, you know, less care was put into maintaining a corpse at this time, there wasn't a whole lot left to him. But in his skull, there was like a hard mass rolling around. It couldn't have been his brain because fun fact, your brain just rots away. So it couldn't have been that. Um, but it could have been a tumor. It's not a tumor. It's not a tumor at all. But it could have been a tumor because a tumor would harden and calcify even after death. So it could remain even though the brain has gone into the earth. Supposedly, a New York physician had at one point told Poe that he had a lesion on his brain that would cause adverse reactions to alcohol. A more benign but timely scenario is that he died from the flu, uh, which then could have become pneumonia, leading to such a dramatic sort of ending, and the high fever could have led to those hallucinations and the confusion. Not surprisingly, some people believe that Poe was murdered. Now, because he was found alive and then moved, it would be more that there was an attempted murder. So they, the people who are behind this belief don't think that it was just like some random guy and you know, he was wrong place, wrong time, but instead, that actually he did make it to Philly, but he was then ambushed by his would-be brothers-in-law who beat him up and told him, you will not marry our sister. Afraid of the encounter, the idea is that he just sort of slithered into the darkness, drank himself maybe into a stupor, and disguised himself in secondhand clothes so that if they saw him, they wouldn't recognize him, and hopefully they wouldn't, you know, try to finish the job. And then he hid for nearly a week, which would explain why he was found baffled in that pub. We'll talk about it. Personally, I think it actually could be multiple theories sort of mashed together because he very well could have had this mass on his brain that meant that drinking was kind of a bad idea. And maybe he was threatened by his brothers-in-law. And so he was drinking so that he could like calm down. He was very stressed. I'd be overwhelmed. Um, and then he ran away to hide. And then because he was already weak, then he was a really easy victim of a coup because they didn't even have to like work hard to kidnap him. They just sort of like grabbed him. And then because you do get alcohol after voting, then that whole scenario still makes sense. And there was so much booze that basically it was just alcohol poisoning and that's what happened. I think that's where I'm at with it. So 
Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's just a few things that all work out together, and it was more of a wrong place, wrong time kind of thing in some regard. Um, I was reading a little bit more on Cooping, and because of how popular it was, and because when he was there, it was actually like the week of an election, I do think it makes a lot of sense. Um, but here's the thing. No matter how, like, normal, I mean, not normal, but explainable, all of those theories are, the thing is, is that we are still sort of making an assumption as to where he was for those five days that he was gone. Because yes, it could be that for those five days he was hiding from his um, fiance's brothers. It could be that he was just off drunk somewhere. It could be that he was kidnapped. But that's where the mystery also comes in, is the fact that we don't know. Because in order for us to know where he was those five days, we would really have to know what led to his ultimate death, and we don't know. So I would love to know what you think. Do you think that it was one of these um, theories that I threw out there? Do you think it was something else? Do you think that there was, I don't know, something supernatural involved? Maybe he was carried off into the night by a raven? I don't know but I do want to know what you think. So let me know in the comments. And as always, let me know what you want me to talk about next. If you want more historical mysterious deaths, if you want some current missing persons. Um, I was recently thinking that I could start just going through the missing persons log and just covering a different case every month because there are so many. Um, if that's something that would be interesting, happy to do it. Um, but yeah. That's it. So as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.